I'm Kelly Copeland. This week on the Believer's Voice of Victory, we're going to hear from my dad, Kenneth Copeland, about being healed and made whole. A few months ago, we had a healing service at our Faith for Freedom Revival right here in a tent on the grounds of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It was such a powerful healing service that we wanted to share it with you. So get your Bibles and let's join Kenneth Copeland for today's message. Father, we thank you this morning that your word is. Say that. God's word is. God's word is. is what? Is whatever you need him to be. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. All of you watching online, I'm supposed to be healed today. Let's say it again. I'm supposed to be healed. I am the heal. And I take it today. It's mine. Jesus bought it. Jesus paid for it. It's mine. I'm supposed to be healed today. <laughs> Come on, give him the gift. Just give the Lord a praise. Now then. You're supposed to be healed today. <laughs> it's crying out. Take it. You own it. It is so simple. I'll show you how simple it is. Open your Bibles to John 3. 16. Everybody in the room knows John 3, 16. But put your eyes on it. Look in your Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life. Zoe life. Oh, if, 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 if only, if only we could read Greek, should have life healing, deliverance from calamity and danger. That's the reason it's translated saved. Saved. Sozo. Why? Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. Now, you and I We're part of that world. We're part of that world. Right, Kevin? We are part of that world. Finally got our heat wave, didn't we? <laughs> Glory to God. We're a part of that world. It it, it causes me a, a lot of sadness. It, 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 it really hurt me if I, if, I would, if I dwelt on it and spent any time thinking about it. How hard it is for religious people to grasp
Yeah, let me, yeah, let me put it like this. It's like an animal, a horse. Why do you have to put blinders on a horse? Because they don't see this way. They see this way. And you have to put those blinders on there to keep from frightening them because they see a lot of stuff out here that we don't see. Our eyes are in the front of our head and we see here and we don't see very far here. Our peripheral vision is, is not very, you see you have to turn your head to do that. But a horse can see a lot of stuff. And that's, that's the way the religious mind thinks. It's not looking right straight ahead and you read scriptures like that and you get a yeah, but. Yeah, but what if? Absolutely the badge of unbelief. Not doubt, unbelief. There's a vast difference between doubt and unbelief. What the Bible calls unbelief is not non belief. It's believing something. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about born again people now here, you know, you know, the world, but well, yeah, brother Copeland, but what if uh, believing something other than the Bible, believing something other than the will of God. I just don't know if it's God's will or not for me to be healed. Well, now, wait a minute. Let, let, let's back up here a second. How long have you been saved, young man? 10 years. Huh? 10 years. 10 years. Yes, sir. Did it ever occur to you that it wasn't God's will to save you? Absolutely not. Neither did it occur to the people that accepted him 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Are you saved? Oh, yes, Brother Copeland. I just don't know if it's God's will to heal me. Can you see the conflict there? Faith begins where the will of God is known. And that's just a small adjustment when you realize that Jesus, the healer, Jesus, the savior, Jesus is God's gift to the world. And in a lot of cases, it's easier to get a sinner healed particularly in a Pentecostal Christian that doesn't know the word because he doesn't know anything. <laughs> he doesn't have enough sense to fuss with it. <laughs> well, particularly if he never has spent any time in church, you're not supposed to be sick. You're not, <laughs> hey, you're not even supposed to die. You will, but you're not supposed to. And I'm gonna tell you something, are you listening? You and I have done all the dying we're ever going to do. Listen, we've done all the dying. I died. I died on the second day of November, 1962. I died. And like the apostle Paul, nevertheless, I live. I was crucified with Christ. My spirit man was circumcised. What does that mean? The word, the sword of the spirit. The moment you said, I mean, I remember that night, glory to God, a little bit before eight o'clock. 
I'd just flown, I just had a, got a new job, glory to God. And, and, and we, God moved us out of that junk we were living in and put us in a brand new furnished apartment. <laughs> it even had a kitchen stove in it. <laughs> I was so thrilled. I flew a man by the name of Weir to Shreveport and back. He was an executive with the Arkansas Louisiana Gas Company. I'll never forget it. And I had gone in and changed clothes. Gloria was cooking supper. And, oh God, man, I mean, the glory of God hit me. I, just, I dropped my shoe, already had one shoe on, I dropped the other one in the floor. And I mean, man, Clyde, the room, to me, the room filled up with the glory of God. And I heard it. If you don't get straightened out with me, you're going to a devil's hell. No, he said, Kenneth, if you don't get straightened out with me, you're going to a devil's hell. I said, I know it. I know it. I know it. What do I do now? You have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. I heard my Sunday school teacher's voice still in my spirit. Mrs. Taggart, she was oh, She called herself old lady Taggart. I could just see her. She's a little small woman and she wore a, a, a little black straw hat and it just sat down right on top of her head and she called herself Old Lady Taggart. Yeah. And she taught the boys Sunday school class. Yeah. And the Southern Baptist Church, you had, you, they ran it like school. And you, every year you, you, know, you went to another grade in Sunday school. Well, we just let them know. Without Mrs. Taggart, we're not coming back. So Mrs. Taggart graduated with us. <laughs> and I heard a voice, boys, you have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. I did and he did. <laughs> now that moment, I became a new creature. I didn't know it. I never heard that. But I knew I was saved. I heard that in the Baptist church. I knew I'm saved now, brother. Yeah. And I called around to Gloria. I said, Gloria, come here, come here, come here. She came around and walked over to me. She had gotten saved two weeks before, sitting on a rented rollaway bed with nothing. I didn't know it. I'm out hunting a job. I'm the one that screwed all this up. <laughs> and you've, you've, you've heard her pray it. She picked up a Bible that my mother had sent me, a little paperback, and she wrote a message to me about seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. And Gloria said, well, I sure do need things. She didn't know how to pray. She just said, Lord, take my life and do something with it. She didn't know the terminology but it's your word. <laughs> Amen. I said, Gloria, what if I, uh, I'm stumbling around because I didn't know how to say this to her. Uh, we had already decided since her folks were Church of Christ and my folks were Baptists and neither, neither shall the two meet, we just wasn't going to say anything about it. I said, uh, Gloria, uh, <laughs> Uh, what if I, uh, well, um, I don't know, uh, maybe I could, uh, you know, maybe go somewhere and give them a testimony for God. <laughs> she said, she thought, what testimony? <laughs> but that's not what she did. She said, hallelujah. I said, what? <laughs> She'd been saved two whole weeks. You know what happened? My mother threw her Bible down on the kitchen table and said, I've prayed the last prayer I'm gonna pray over him. If he goes to hell, it's your fault. She got saved in two weeks and I got saved in three. 
Guess who I called first? Mama. <laughs> now then, I said all that to say this. God so loved that he gave. He gave the most precious thing that he had. He so loved that he gave. Isaiah 53, we're getting close to cold. Verse four, surely he hath borne our griefs, <clears throat> carried our sorrows. The literal translation of that, surely <clears throat> he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pain. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed. Now, every morning, I purposely, at the Lord's instruction, develop this as a daily routine. Every day, every day, the very first thing I do, I walk in the bathroom, look myself in the eye. Surely Jesus bore my sickness and carried my pains. They did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded. I'm looking at myself in the eye and I quote that whole thing. Then I go to Matthew 8, 17. He took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Only I say it like this. He took glory and my infirmities and bore our sicknesses. First Peter 2, 24. He bore our sins. I'm looking myself right in the face. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness and by his stripes glory in our heal, well restored and strong. Every day, start your day like that. My, my, my. Do something that'll remind you of it every day. Be it done unto you according to the way you believe, it's yours. How? Just like that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today that the healer's in the house. We thank you and praise you today. My name is Christy, and this is my son, Gabriel. And we learned how to have our own faith and not just, not just hear other people and their testimonies, but to learn how to have your own and, and to be able to, to walk it out with uh, using the Word. Well, I was on the trampoline with my three brothers and I threw my little brothers, actually my second littlest brother's hat on the side of the trampoline. He went to go get it be, and then for revenge on me, I had a slinky. I threw it on the side because I was just trying to throw it in the air. It landed. I went to go get it, and my brother pushed me off the trampoline. Now, sometimes I'm a right-handed, so I try to like push up, but when I did that, I landed right on my right arm. And when I did that, um, I went inside, and I and then I kept screaming. So my dad decided to take me to urgent care. Mm -hmm. 
and then we f then we found out that my arm was structurally. There was a fracture and a dislocated bone. So he needed surgery. They weren't, it wasn't gonna be an open surgery. They were able to just uh, manipulate it and put it and put the bone back into place. But they did need to put him to sleep and they put a cast on him. And they told us it would be six to eight weeks. So the problem with that was this happened on December 17th and he had a birthday in less than a month. So we already had plans set to go to the hotel at the Great Wolf Lodge. And when he realized that, when he heard the six to eight weeks, suddenly everything shifted to where the consequences of our choices became real. And the reality was that we're gonna go to a water park for his birthday, on his birthday, the date couldn't be uh, changed, and he was gonna be in a cast. He asked forgiveness from younger brother for taking his hat and throwing it. Younger brother asked forgiveness for retaliating back. We all came together, we prayed, and we prayed for an accelerated healing. 10 days later, we had our very first post uh, surgery appointment. What we went in for was to tighten up the cast. In reality, they did two x-rays. The first x-ray that they did, they checked it. She came in later and she said that they're going to check it again. It was confirmed twice that the, the fracture was completely filled in and everything was healed in those 10 days. They said, because he is a little boy, we want to put him in a sling for an additional week, and then we're going to check him and see if everything's still good. And if it is, we're going to take off the sling, and he's going to be just fine. So we went back eight days later. He got another x-ray. Everything was still perfect. In all of that, it was a total of 18 days. And 18 in Hebrew means high. High? High. And that means life. And so our scripture verse that we stood on for this was Psalm 138.8. And it says that He will perfect that which concerns us. And knowing the situation, knowing that His heart's desire and what He was planning on was to go to the Great Wolf Lodge on His birthday, we were believing that God would perfect that which concerned Him. And He did because he loves me so much that he would do every, anything, even though if it's the tiniest thing, just going to my own birthday party at Great Wolf Lodge. If I would tell anybody anything, I would tell them about how much God loves them and how much he loves their kids. And when you put that love in, faith is just a natural byproduct. I am so grateful for our partnership with KCM. You know that you're not alone but you're connected in and you're able to stand on the, the foundation that has already been laid. And you're coming alongside and running in this, this faith team, you know, that puts the word first. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.